Hello, this is Dr. Kraus with another video on a topic that I think is important to engineering students or practicing engineers who are new to Python but who have probably had some exposure to other programming languages. Um, so just trying to get them up to speed quickly. Uh, one of the weirder parts about Python is that you're always going to have these import statements, almost always going to have these import statements at the top of your code. And so if you've been following my examples, you've seen this, these three lines at the start of every Jupyter Notebook example, and it just looks like a really odd incantation. Essentially what it's doing is taking the plotting functions and importing them into you know, what's probably a namespace called PLT and importing NumPy and creating a namespace NP that has all the NumPy functions. And so we'll talk about how that works and why that's important. Um, part of why this is necessary is sort of like C, Python by itself is kind of small. Um, C by itself is referred to oftentimes as small, but it's when you can start including in C all of these standard libraries that you start to have something really powerful. A similar mechanism happens in Python. By itself, it's kind of cool, but somewhat limited. Um, most of the power comes from importing libraries that other people or modules that other people have made available to you. So for engineers using Python, that includes NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, um, it could also include OS, system time, cherry pie if you're trying to do some kind of Raspberry Pi or something, uh, web server kind of thing. And you have to import those modules to use them. Um, but Python gives you some options in terms of how you import them, and that re re uh, relates to namespaces. Um, in a lot of other languages, if you include... Um, some kind of library or module, or if there's already a bunch of built-in functions in that language, when you start defining your own functions, sometimes you just have to be super, super careful to make sure that the name of your personal helper built-in function does not override an existing name of a function or variable that already comes with the language. Um, and so namespaces provide Python with a really great way to work around that. And it's essential because there's just so many modules on the internet that you can borrow. You can't make sure that no one has a variable called A or something. Um, so there's a really great explanation of variables and namespaces on this page. I'll try to remember to put this link in the comments below. Um, but that should take me, it's actually already opened, to here. And so this person um, seems to do a really good job of explaining kind of an abstract concept in a way that is pretty clear. And so first you talk about what is a name, and I'll have that on my slides as well. But a name is essentially these ABC things over here that refer to the actual variable contents. And so if you just typed A into your um, Jupyter Notebook, or an IPython console, or in a function, Python would have to somehow know what A refers to, and it would look up A in some kind of namespace. And if you're at the very top level of a script, or you're in the main part of the Jupyter Notebook, you might be working in the global namespace, and that's an important one. Uh, but each function... Um, module or object also has its own namespace. And so if I had to find a equals seven up here, but then I had my own function where I inside that function I had to find a equals five, when I'm inside the function, a is equal to five, when I'm outside the function, a is equal to seven, that can get a little weird. And so that's part of why when we import, we wanna to try to avoid collisions. And so there's different ways that we can import a module that increase or decrease the risk of us overriding a variable that's already in the global namespace. When you start overriding global namespace variables, your code can have um, unintended effects, and those are called namespace collisions. So namespaces are a little bit abstract. You don't have to understand all of the details, but having a little bit of knowledge that this is going on um, will help you understand what happens when we import. So another potential confusion is that when you're borrowing other people's code off the internet or reading through different tutorials or whatever, you may come across up to four different ways to import. If you're an engineer and you need to do arrays and matrices and vectors and things, so then NumPy is one of your go-to um, modules. And so you could just type import NumPy. 
then everything inside the NumPy module is available to you, but you have to type NumPy dot first. So for example, if you just need to access pi to create a sine wave or something, you would type NumPy dot pi. And that's extra typing and slightly annoying, but as long as you are very careful to never name any of your variables NumPy, in which case you're just shooting yourself in the foot, then this will prevent any and all namespace collisions because NumPy.Py isn't going to be the same as just Pi in your global namespace. Um, so it's very, very robust way to protect against namespace collisions. Um, numpy.py then is completely different from any other module. So if you had a matplotlib.py and a numpy.py, those are two different things, and it doesn't matter, and they don't interfere with each other. Um, but having to type numpy dot all the time can be a little bit annoying, um, unless you just really, really good at typing or just really enjoy the repetitiveness of that. So another shortcut that you'll see in a lot of online tutorials is to import numpy as np. So now I've just got two letters instead of five, and I would type np.py, and that would be great. And now np is the sort of name of the namespace. And so np.py works just as numpy.py used to work. And again, the only danger here is that you can never, ever, ever define a variable that is np, because that would overwrite your import. So we're protecting against namespace collisions. Uh, but if you later accidentally used NP as a variable name, you've really, really, really screwed up your code, and that would have some bad effects on you. Um, along those lines, some people take it a bit further and just do import NumPy as capital N, but to remember that you're never allowed to use capital N as a variable, to me, is a little bit harder. And so I'm going to be a fan of import NumPy as MP. <coughs> Okay, a third way is to explicitly specify, so NumPy by itself probably has hundreds or even thousands of things defined in it. It's a very big module with a lot of powerful tools. You could explicitly grab only the things that you want, and then this would put pi and a range now as their own names. You don't have to type anything before them. There's no np dot or whatever. Um, but you've now put pi and a range in the global namespace and potentially overwritten any variables or functions that would use that. Now, would you really write your own function called pi or a range? Probably not, uh, but there's just a little bit of risk there. Um, it's a little bit cumbersome to have that first line because you've got to remember or somehow have saved somewhere everything you ever use out of NumPy. Um, that would be a little bit tedious in my mind to try to remember that every time. But it's the least amount of typing of any of the options so far. Because I'm not having to type mp dot or numpy dot. The fourth way is just to say from numpy import star. That means take everything that's in the numpy module and put it in the global namespace. So that gets me pi and a range and whatever. But absolutely everything that's in there is now in the global namespace. I used to do this when I was teaching Python at first. Um, the advantage is that it, I mean, this was kind of my old habit, was to put those two lines at the top of the code. Um, it's the easiest way to try to just not think about namespaces and not think about importing and just get started. And so you can just create figures and you can plot things and you can create sine waves and you have pi and a range and all those things. Um, but I would say this is the most dangerous of the four. Um, the first risk is that there are namespace collisions. Now, any variable that's defined in NumPy has now overwritten any other variable with the same name in your global namespace. Um, and they've now smoothed a lot of this out. But for example, there used to be some things in matplotlib that were also defined in NumPy, um, which is now matplotlib now makes this dot .pi plot apart. This is only the plotting parts of matplotlib to reduce the collisions. But there's a big risk of namespace collisions. There was an FFT inside of NumPy and an FFT inside of matplotlib, and they were not the same, and it was kind of messy for a while. Again, they've worked out a lot of those things, but still, it's dangerous. Um, the other thing that might not be quite as obvious is if you're looking at someone else's code and you're like, huh, I need to try to look at the help on plot or figure or FFT or whatever, it, it's not as obvious whether 
the variable names that I'm using are coming from NumPy or coming from matplotlib. And especially if you have even more of those or some of your own personal libraries, it makes it harder for someone else to look at your code and know where the different names are coming from. And so that makes code maintenance difficult. And sometimes you'd be surprised even maintaining your own code a week or a month later or a year later is tricky. Um, so I am not going to recommend doing this anymore, even though it kind of glosses over the namespace thing and kind of gets rid of one sort of learning hurdle. I think it does more harm than it does good. And many Python users are going to look at this and go, that is a dangerous and poor practice, and we shun you. You don't want to be shunned. Mostly kidding. Um, this used to work um, from the IPython console with a percent PyLab option, uh, but I think that's going away because this is kind of so heavily frowned upon. Um, and Spider kind of does this sort of thing. If you put in its import options to use NumPy and PyLab at uh, load time, um, I'm not using Spider much anymore. Anyways, I've kind of gravitated towards the Jupyter Notebook, but this can get just a little bit odd at times and so I'm not recommending anymore. So my recommendation from now on is to have uh, these two lines at the top of all scripts and then have the, I also do that percent matplotlib inline thing and I've talked about that in the Jupyter Notebook. So those three things together um, it is slightly more typing you have to have the NP dots and the PLT dots when you want to create a figure um, but I think it does a lot of good for you in terms of forcing you to learn what is in NumPy, what is in matplotlib, and so on. And it's a because we've got these shortened versions, I think it's a reasonable protection against namespace collisions. Um, but I think it just helps you learn more and uh, protects you as opposed to just doing the from NumPy import star. So... There it is, and hopefully you can now understand the different importing commands you're seeing in other people's example code, and you're not super hung up on that going forward.